Welcome to Firebase release notes for November, where we cover recent big and small releases from Firebase. Now we have a lot to cover today, so let's dig in right away. And we'll start with some highlights from the Firebase Summit that we just concluded. First up, we added many new Firebase extensions and we updated some existing ones, including adding the ability to process one-time payments and handle more payment providers with the Stripe extension. Then we added a new extension to process payments with Google Pay 2. And with the new Ship Engine extension, you can calculate shipping costs to any address in the world and print shipping labels with just a few lines of code. And there is now beta level support for tvOS and macOS in many of our SDKs, so that you can build apps that are compatible across many Apple devices from a single code base. We have new documentation on what data each Firebase product collects and shares to help you prepare for Google Play's new data safety policy, which launches to app users next year. Crashlytics added application not responding or ANR reports and bulk issue management to the console, in addition to signaling three common types of issues that I mentioned last month. And finally, you can now automatically optimize the individual experience of each user of the app through the power of machine learning, with a beta release of personalization in Firebase Remote Config. And as said, there were even more updates at the Firebase Summit, so read the blog post and watch the videos that are linked below for full details. We had a lot of recent updates for Firestore 2, so let's quickly look at those. The Firestore SDKs for C++ and Unity are now generally available for Android and iOS, meaning that they are ready for production use in your native mobile games. Desktop support remains in beta, and is mostly meant for use during development. At Cloud Next, we launched an extension that indexes and synchronizes a Firestore collection to Elastic App Search. This is in addition to the Ogolia extension that we already offered. So it's giving you two great choices to add full textures to your Firestore documents. And with Firebase App Check, you can now protect access to Firestore documents to just calls coming from your own application. It's as easy as implementing the App Check SDKs in your application code and then enforcing attestation in the Firebase console with a checkbox. Check the links for all these Firestore updates that I included in the description below. By combining Flutter and Firebase, you can build beautiful, cross-platform serverless apps from a single code base. With the latest release of Dartpad, Flutter's online editor, you can now experiment with Firebase and Flutter in just your browser. So getting started is as easy as opening dartpad.dev in a new browser tab, importing the Firebase packages, and that's it. There is no step three. Check the link to a demo app that I included below. Between Firebase cloud messaging and in-app messaging products, you can reach your users both at key moments when they are actively using your app, and you can re-engage them when something important happens while they're not using the app. In the Firebase console, you can now manage all your messaging campaigns from a single screen. You can search and filter, and you can check engagement metrics for each of your campaigns on things like open and click rates. To try this new unified dashboard, visit the console and click the Preview Now button. And finally, with Firebase app distribution, you could already distribute your apps to testers using the Firebase console, the CLI, and the plugins that we have for Gradle and Fastlane. But we just added a new REST API to App Distro 2, so that you can build custom logic that matches your team's processes to add and remove testers, upload new app binaries, distribute releases, update release notes, and much more. Check the blog post for full details. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Frank Rapuff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.